Mr. Mark Selby. How are you, sir? Mr. Matthew Gordon, doing very, very well. You look like you're in one of those hotel lobby type environments. Where are you? I am in the uh, Air Canada lounge at Heathrow on my way back from the Zurich Precious and Battery Metals Summit. Uh, I was on a panel with uh, Anthony Vaccaro, who's the publisher of the Northern Miner, um, and a uh, little presentation. Yeah, it was good. It was a good panel, actually. So Good session. Good, 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 good. I, I, I couldn't make it myself. Um, I'm intrigued to see, get the feedback from that one. Um, well, look, um, we're going to talk today about a, bun- a bunch of company news, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, yeah. Maybe first we better talk about uh, the nickel market. How are we doing? Yeah, so we're bouncing off, you know, as as said that our sell-off finally arrived and we're, you know, bouncing off support now looks like it's at the $17,000 a ton level. Again, we might break to sixteen five sixteen briefly um, right now, but I, you know, I think we'll see, you know, largely be in the 17 to 17, five range through your end when, you know, I think we'll start to see demand reassert itself. You know, LME inventories again, haven't really seen much pile up yet, you know, despite talk of lots of surpluses everywhere, uh, not much is actually hit the LME yet. Um, you know, in terms of uh, you know, prices in uh, China, uh, there, there was a story that the Indonesian government gave some temporary quotas to people um, just to alleviate some of the ore shortages, and that took some pressure off uh, the ore prices and NPI prices, and they, they gave up some of the gains uh, you know that they, they, they had previously done. But again, we're going into the Philippine rainy season right now, so we'll see you know how, how all that shakes out. Uh, going forward. Okay, and, and so and I just want to kind of stick with that a bit because I've yeah. spoken to at least three people recently who quote that they're not nickel followers per se, but they know a little, you know, a little information is dangerous in, in a way. Yeah. All quoted at me, oh, nickel price is going to be on some pressure for some time to come because Indonesia is going to be able to produce all the nickel we need. Let's remind people what the reality is. Way higher than forecast demand grades coming off in in uh, Indonesia. So yes, the capacity is there, but that capacity is effectively derated as the average feed grades come off. And so, uh, and you know, we've been in a market where because lithium prices have been tanking uh, so badly, we've been destocking in the battery supply chain for most of the year. Um, you know, one thing we talked about last week, yeah, again, there were some EV stories and, and the bears were like, you know, oh, no one's buying EVs anymore. It's all over. It was all all, all hype. Just the facts, uh, you know, EV, global EV sales were up 23% year over year in September. The year to date number for 2023, despite interest rates, despite the ends of some subsidy programs, you know, d- despite all of this, you know, noise around uh, year to date sales up 39 percent. So, you know, I would hardly call that uh, a collapse <laughs> in, in sales going forward. And so once the destocking ends and you've got 40 percent growth, they need to then start restocking back up to that those numbers. When you when you have some segments of the market growing at a very high rate, when they decide to restock, put on your neck, neck brace, make sure you've got your seatbelt on because they, they can be face ripping. Now, uh, you know, I don't think it's going to be quite that uh, exciting, but the market will start to move in the new year and it's going to move up, you know, pretty dramatically. And again, <clears throat> the market's going to be way, way, way tighter than the, the people you're talking to who are talking about the nickel market being in surplus uh, forever. OK, well, y- y- you have called it three years in a row for me. So, uh, yeah, I'm listening to you. Um, so let, let, let's let's get into the markets proper, if you don't mind talking about some, some of the companies. I'm, I'm, but I'm going to start with you guys, right? Your stock has come off in the last four to six weeks. What's, what's going on over there at uh, Canada Nickel? Well, one is the market broadly. Um, there was a cyanide pill vendor at the Precious Metal Summit <laughs> supplying cyanide pills to junior mining CEOs because, you know, the, it was a pretty dismal um, uh, environment because, every well, it, one, everyone's getting hit. Uh, the, the, the overall nickel sector has been hit. You know, most of the companies uh, that, you know, we follow and, and, and look at as peers are back to their, you know, mid-summer 2020 
uh, type of numbers before Elon Musk started talking about uh, nickel. And, and we all had uh, a nice run up, you know, in terms of, you know, what's going on with CNC specifically, absolutely nothing. You know, we, because we're a very liquid stock, we, we get some of the trading machines using us, you know, to help amplify, you know, some of these, these down moves. The good thing is once we get some fundamental news, and again, we're still on track to get an offtake agreement, you know, over the line uh, before year end, you know, those same, that same liquidity, um, you know, gets amplified on the upside. So, uh, you know, uh, if you look at, look in your couches, <laughs> cushions, find some more change to buy some more stock, but yeah, there's no, there's no, no you know, nothing going on at all specifically with us on, on the, on the downside. But what's it going to take? Cause obviously, you know, 120 a few weeks ago and you know, down to in the, in the nineties now. So what's it going to take to get people's confidence back in, not just the market and nickel and then the commodities nickel, but for you guys, what have you got to do? What have you got to deliver? Yeah, I think, I mean, I think, you know, the, the offtake agreement or if there's something else that comes along, that's even better that we get done before year end. It's, it's the, that external confirmation that we need this project to happen in North America. You know, it, it does, does, it counters two narratives. One is, you know, again, there are a lot of investors who read that, oh, Indonesia is going to flood the market. And so, therefore, we'll never need uh, another nickel project for another five or six years. So I, I don't need to do that. And then, you know, secondly, in terms of the, you know, again, our deposit doesn't look like a Sudbury deposit. So, again, some investors aren't comfortable with something, quote, that's new. Um, and so all of a sudden, if you get some additional validation, because, again, we already have 9.9 percent investment from Anglo-American. You know, they don't make a lot of junior mining investments and, you know, and, and we're one of their few nickel, nickel investments as well. So we tick both boxes in terms of, you know, uh, that validation. But, uh, you know, I think one more like that will be a catalyst, you know, that'll help get the sector going. If you go back to lithium in 2019, uh, 2020, you know, that's what really turned the corner on the lithium market was you had a couple of, of, of deals done, um, you know, that got people interested in realizing, okay, yeah, no, you know, we will need a lot more lithium and there's not much in the pipeline. And then, you know, lithium went, went, went off to the races. So, you know, I think, you know, that that's why you know, we're pretty keen to try and try and get something like this done uh, before you're in. Okay. Well, I, I guess we'll hear from you when we hear from you, but let, and let's talk about, you know, um, you know, nickel security, critical minerals security. Everyone wants to control their own, their own um, inventory and, and su supply chain. Uh, across the board, North America is what you know you're, you're kind of focused on in, in, in the sense of um, how important your project is. But there's other companies too. Spruce Ridge, they've they've been active recently. What's happening there? Yeah, so good news. So uh, um, Steve Balch, who's, who's our VPX, has basically been acting as interim CEO to clean up. There's a bit of a mess with the CEO. They own, they own 5.6 million of our shares. Uh, they're using two million of those. Uh, uh, to do a deal with a company called Rab Capital, uh, who used to be uh, our largest shareholder uh, at RNC, and we're good supportive shareholders uh, all through that time. Uh, I helped uh, connect that deal, and it basically it's a laterite project in, in Oregon. It's almost a billion pounds uh, of resource. Uh, prior to the Eagle Mine starting up a few years ago, uh, the, the there was a mine and uh, laterite operation in Oregon that was the only domestic source of supply of nickel. You know. In, in the United States. And so, you know, Oregon is one of, you know, a very, you know, very few uh, places where you can uh, do that. And again, with the different types of, you know, laterite processing technology that are way more uh, advanced than, than they were five years ago, you know, there's, there's a whole bunch of different ways, you know, to look at unlocking the value. And uh, again, in the current environment, we have that property would, would qualify for both the DOD and DOE subsidies. You know, there's a pile of free money to be able to advance that project. So I, I think that's, you know, you know, uh, I would take a look at Spruce Ridge. You know, right now it's basically trading, you know, almost just for the value of uh, of, of their uh, Canada nickel shares. And, and so, you know, uh, I, I think as having one of these, you know, rare properties in the U.S., you know, they're going to be really set up for success uh, going forward. So um, yeah, definitely want to keep to keep an eye on. Keep an keep eye on Spruce Ridge Rakes. Okay. Um, and I'll go and have a look at them after this. Okay. So that's the good. Uh, let's move to arguably the bad. Um, horizontal minerals. It's, it's 
just not going their way at the moment, is it? No. So, so release out, you know, basically, uh, you know, extended the project deadline, said the capital costs are going to go up by at least 35%. Uh, they came back with another release this week that said, uh, you know, it's going to take till the end of Q1 2024 before we think we have an interim financing solution to be able to generate enough cash. And so given the amount of cash that we have, we're actually going to wind down construction at the site. Um, and so, you know, the stock had already come off 80% and it's, you know, gone down uh, another major chunk uh, further. It's, 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 it's tough to see, um, you know, that's something you and I talked about three years ago that, you know, just looking at, and again, this is why I always encourage people to benchmark, try and find benchmarks for similar projects because there was the Ansa Puma project and the uh, Barrel Alto uh, Anglo-American expansion um, and the CapEx for those projects were significantly larger than what the, you know, the feasibility study numbers had shown. I kind of eased off a little bit because you had Orion go in there, you had Glencore go in there and, and you kind of think, okay, you know, these guys we have done, do, done some due diligence. So maybe there is something there that we haven't seen, but unfortunately, you know, it, lo it looks like it's playing out, you know, as, as we had initially, ex you know, expected uh, a few years back on the show. So, so anyways, I hope to get there again. We need all the nickel and we need, a, the, uh, you know, it's good to see another project, you know, make it through yeah like we, we need we need this to work for them um we I'd say the market needs it all but you know if i look back to those conversations three years ago with them and and three year, three years ago with you it, it was the, the 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 capex was it was a major concern and it's not just due to inflationary pressures it's almost like perhaps they didn't need to be so aggressive with the with the forecast people would not have thought anything you know, bad of them if 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 they kind of been a bit more realistic. It, it seems, but look, um, we're definitely not gloating. Um, it's we want them to sort this out. Money is tight. There's lots of pressures and lots of companies at the moment. But man, they've taken an absolute beating here. Um, I, I want to kind of jump on to um, Centaurus actually because they likewise, arguably not good news. What's happened there? Yeah, so so they've announced a further extension to their. Uh, feasibility study. <laughs> Again, we did it a couple times as well, um, you know, for various reasons. Um, Asenko, uh, you know, they're saying that Asenko, who is their engineer, um, is, you know, basically needs more time to compile the operating capital cost estimates. They're having difficulty getting the, the information that they need from the suppliers of that number. I can tell you that is an issue in the industry. Um, you know, so many sort of supporting firms, you know, are two times or three times as busy as they were, you know, 24 months ago. And they just don't have the capacity to be able to respond, you know, necessarily in the kind of time frame you want. So, uh, again, you know, that that project uh, I've always believed uh, is is going to be uh, pretty uh, solid. So um, we'll just have to wait and see. And it'll just take a little longer for the numbers to come out. And again, that shifts their entire timeline in terms of, you know, when they were going to look to make an investment decision towards the uh, end, end of next year as opposed to mid next year. So Okay. Okay. Well, again, we'll, we'll kind of stay on top of that one. And the other the other one that we, we've always been, you know, firm favorites of is obviously uh, Talon. But if, if, again, looking at the share price, you know, 18 months ago, 83 cents down, um, sitting around, well, I think a lot lower these days, um, to, you know, you got about a, qu a quarter of that. So something's going on there despite recent news. Yeah. So like literally, you know, what you're looking at, it's, it's, it's the every so many of the nickel development stories, you know, are really trading back to their mid 2020 levels. And, you know, this this is one of them. So they've done a huge amount of great work. You know, since that time frame, and you know, the markets basically, you know, give them zero zero credit for. So the the last, you know, the release today um, was great. Uh, you know, twenty uh, they drilled twenty holes. Uh, Fourteen of them they reported on twenty holes. Fourteen of them uh, were outside the current resource. Um, you know, with some pretty good grades. You know, you saw a, a you know a number of multi percent intervals. You know, and that uh, you know that'll end up. In, in a resource in the future and should, you know, help them to, you know, continue to expand uh, the resource further. So, so again, good, good to see those, those, uh, those, those results come through with them and uh, keen to see what their next resource update is going to look like. Yeah, obviously, um, and the, the, their partners will be too. I'm um, uh, and, and talking partnerships. Um, I, the IGO Buxton uh, resource JV, um, also some good holes there. What did you make of that? Yeah, we we had mentioned Buxton in the in the past. Um, 
IGO is earning into a pretty big percentage. I can't remember off of the top of it, but literally if you want to see what a high grade nickel hole looks like, and when it's really high grade, you get these Pentlandite eyes um, in there. And that, that core picture uh, with some 7% nickel uh, is, a, is a beautiful piece of core and, and it is a great example of what high grade looks like. Um, they, they had a geophysical target, popped a hole right in the middle of it and you know, hit 13 meters of 4% nickel. Um, with with five and a half meters at seven percent nickel, the plate itself doesn't look like it's a massive target. And and this second hole they did, it sort of pinched out that way. But again, this is two holes into the target. Who knows? You know, it, it could open up um, as it goes up dip. Um, but it's you know basically a brand new discovery, uh, which is great. And and again, I would encourage people if you want to see what a good exploration release looks like. This is a very good one. They've got the drill hole, you know, the, the intervals clearly laid out. They have got the true width determined. So, you you know, they're not trying to, you know, take something that's a meter wide and tell you it's, you know, 13 meters long. They give you this, the, 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 geo, the actual map of where that geophysical template uh, target was and how the drill holes you know, went in, into that geophysical target. Um, and they give you a plan and cross-section view so you can get a really good understanding of you know, what this drill hole you know, really looks like um, and, and what's there. So um, again, you know, one to keep an eye on, it's, I don't know how much of it they end up owning in the end, but the market cap's only $35 million. And you know, uh, when, whenever, whatever system is able to generate these kind of grades and these kind of lenses, you know, who knows, they may find some from other lenses you know, further down um, but uh, this is a pretty intriguing, pretty intriguing discovery. Um, and, uh, you know, again, Buxton, you know, one to keep an eye on. And, and again, we've had so few wheel discoveries. It's great to see something show up um, in, a, in, a, in a good jurisdiction. Yeah, like I say, it's, it's, it's early, early days, but, um, but I, I don't think IG is going to suffer too, too, um, too badly if it doesn't go well. Because um, obviously they've got uh, Cosmos in, in the background where they've pumped in a lot of money so far. What, what's happening over there? Yeah, so, so this was, a, they, they acquired Western Areas, which was a standalone nickel producer. Uh, so there's two standalone nickel producers that have been around since the early 2000s, Mincor and Western Areas. Uh, and they were both acquired um, in the last 12 months. Um, because again, everyone has hoovered up all of the known sulfide deposits that have been around for a while. One of the one of the uh, assets within uh, Western Areas was a, a project called Cosmos. It used to be owned by a company called uh, Jubilee that in it, it, it itself was acquired for one point four billion dollars um, by uh, Extrata at the peak of the market in two thousand seven. Uh, the mine has been shut down, but they made some additional discoveries uh, nearby. Um, and I don't know if I mentioned shortly after they bought the Western Areas deal, IGO ended up having to write off a billion dollars of that acquisition price. So not the you know best you know <laughs> maybe next time you need to do a little more DD uh, to ROI, avoid those Mark. kinds of write offs. Not a good ROI. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it'll be a good ROI afterwards because you know that billion has already been written off, um, but. They've, they've already pumped in $500 million to develop these additional deposits. Um, and it, they're, st they're struggling to, to ramp it up. So, you know, there, there's some uh, milestones coming up. They, and so we'll, you know, we'll see where they get to. I just want to use this as an example to highlight again, you know, so many people get caught up in great. They have a 10 million ton resource at 2% nickel. I mean, it is deep. They're, they're sinking a thousand meter shaft. Um, and, you know, again, some of the analysts are saying they're not even sure whether the thing will start up or not. And they might actually have to just put a pause on it and, and, and rethink about how they're going to develop, you know, the asset in total. This is 10 million tons at 2%. So, you know, when somebody has a few hundred thousand tons at a percent or two or drilling, you know, 1% intervals down deep, it's going to be pretty, pretty hard, you know, for the math, you know, for that deposit, you know, to end up working. So, uh, you know, again, just want to use this as an example, uh, you know, to to to, uh, to follow through on. You know, we're going to have to keep banging that drum. <laughs> it's just going to keep people, you know, and it doesn't matter what the commodity is. You know, grade is king is a cliche that perhaps is when taken on its own is is um is is where people fall down okay let's listen i'm trying to keep it family show keep it polite keep it positive uh but grade is not the only variable there are multiple variables which matter 
uh, grade is just one of those, please, folks. So 2% nickel at, with 10 million tons and you're still struggling. That should say it all, okay? Um, now, help, help me with the next one. <laughs> help me with this one, okay? Not quite sure how to read this. Um, premium nickel, they've released some drill results recently. What did you make of those? Yeah, so again, sort of good, consistent with, you know, the kind of, you know, historical resource you know, so far that's there. Um, you know, kudos to that management team because, you know, the market cap is, they've kept it, you know, quite high and haven't been hit, you know, nearly as hard uh, as, as the rest of us. Um, you know, to be honest, though, I think, you know, given what our call was on Horizonte before, you know, what we thought was, you know, <laughs> the underlying value of Chalice, you know, to be honest, I, I really struggle, again, just given just what I said about, about IGO's Cosmos operation, you know, to have something that's going to be one and a half percent nickel, you know, thousand meters deep, you know, in, in the, in the central part of Southern Africa, I think is going to, you know, there's a chance they're going to make a, another bigger, better discovery. But, you know, right now in today's markets where, you know, as I said, everything in the nickel space, you know, has generally almost traded back to where we were in mid 2020. And, and if again, if you look at relative, you know, they're right now, their market cap is three quarters of what Centaurus is, which is just a few months away, um, you know, from, um, you know, from completing a feasibility study. They're going to be mining one percent nickel as open pit. And these guys are worth three quarters of what Centaurus is today. You know, I would look if you look at Magna metals with, again, their higher grade underground, you know, past producer, if that's kind of what you like, um, you know, the relative value of Magna versus this company, you know, you know, Magna's, you know, head and shoulders uh, above, you know, at the stage, you know, where these guys are at. So, uh, uh, again, I, you know, I would tread carefully with this one at these valuations. And there's a whole pile of other stocks particular in this market that offer, you know, far better value at, at this point. So, okay. Some, some cautionary tales, some actual um, examples there about how you can value companies. There's some data that points that you can go and look at. So be, be careful out there, folks. Um, all is not as it seems sometimes when companies present information um, and, uh, <laughs> Valuations are definitely not all as they seem at the moment. And, and I, I mean that both ends of the scale. I think there's some companies with great assets which are just not seeing the value at the moment because it's, it's a risk off environment. And at the other end, where people are, and well, like I say, well done, kudos to the manager, various management teams who are kind of keeping the price up there. It's perhaps a little bit toppy, we'll say. Um, well, look, Mark, I, I know you're in the middle, you're about to get a flight. So do you appreciate Oh, just, just, just one more thing before we go. Sorry, it's already cut you off. No, I think again, it's 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 so easy to get caught up and just like <laughs> be you know panic that everything's selling off. You know, you know. Again, uh, I've been invested in something for two years or three years, and and now I'm back to a zero on that investment. These are the markets where you make money. You know, I, you know, we picked up Beta Hunt for twelve million dollars in late 2015, early 2016, which is the only time the markets have been worse than they are right now. And so do your work, choose the good companies, because uh, again, the, you know, in, in these kind of things, good, average, bad, generally everything sells off. And it's a chance for you to really get into some good names at a relatively low price. So, you know, take a look at your portfolio. If there's some that you don't really like, get out of them, take that cash, and then and put them in the, in your best options out there because because the, these are as painful as it seems right now. These are the real great buying opportunities. I, I wish I hadn't bought as much stock as I did at two dollars and three dollars uh, in Canada nickel to be able to back it up the bus at ninety cents here. So you know that's uh, that's what you know this weekend. <laughs> go pick some stocks to start buying um, between now and year end. Fundamentals, 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 folks. I uh, appreciate your time, Mark. See you, see you uh, soon. Thank you, sir.